Hey, I'm April, and this is Bitch Bed Podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back, or welcome to the podcast. I hope everybody had a good month, and if not, I hope your next month is better and brings you all the things uh, that you were hoping this month did. I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is like my fourth, fifth time recording this episode, and I'm definitely having one of those moments where you think you have a really good idea. And you're all pumped about it. And then you try to implement your idea or expand on your idea. And then you realize it's not going the way that you wanted it to. And then you get really frustrated. And the self-doubt comes starts coming in. And it's just a really, really bad time. But I am going to try to do this it's a little bit too late in the month to switch gears entirely nor have i gotten any new spouts of inspiration to change it to so we're just gonna stick with what i got and pray that it that it lands well um So the topic that I was going to add my two cents into this month on the podcast was about mistakes and why I think mistakes are important. And the reason why I think mistakes are important is because they highlight areas of improvement. And they only work if you can acknowledge the mistake. Because noticing and acknowledging the mistake are step one. And that's the easy part. You can realize within yourself when you've made a bad decision, when you've said something that you shouldn't have said and you've done something you shouldn't have done. It's really easy to catch yourself. And if not, hopefully you have good people in your life that can point out um, those moments for you so you can learn from them. But the hard part about it when it comes to mistakes is yeah realizing the mistake is you know half the battle but then you have to actually um make a conscious decision to learn from it and to change something from it or to make any necessary changes uh within yourself that are needed within a certain situation with a person like some change has to be made and something has to be done in order to correct the mistake, whether it's an apology, whether it's, um, you know, redoing what you did do or like whatever the case may be, normally mistakes have consequences and you have to learn from those consequences. Otherwise, more consequences are going to keep coming. And sometimes you can realize you're making a mistake while you're making it and I know I've had that happen um specifically me being involved with the fuck boy that I mentioned in uh my pilot episode I knew going into that decision that it was a mistake I knew I shouldn't have been messing around with him I knew that it wasn't gonna end well I knew exactly how this was gonna turn out And I think my naivety was definitely a part in a part of that decision because I definitely didn't know all the things that I know now, but it was a mistake that I had to make. And if I didn't make that mistake, who knows if I would even be sitting here right now talking to you because with me being involved with the fuck boy, I learned a lot of things. Mainly, I was forced to confront and deal with 
the demons that my dad's ex-wife had planted into my head. And if I didn't, if I wasn't involved with that person, I don't think I would have had a reason to confront those demons. And I wouldn't have had um, to go on my healing journey and I wouldn't have, or I wouldn't have had to start my healing journey. I wouldn't have gone to therapy and I wouldn't have learned all the things that I learned from therapy to be able to help myself with the second round of trauma that came in to play where my dad's son was concerned. So it was definitely a necessary mistake and I real and I knew it was a mistake when I was making it, but it was something that I had to go through and I came out the other side better for it. It sucked in the moment. Don't get me wrong. It was a pain in the ass. And I hated a lot of what I was dealing with and the person I was letting myself be. But I really think now looking back on it just now, that was such a pivotal moment for myself because I want to say up until that point, I was very much... I would be the type of person somebody wanted me to be. I just kind of did what I needed to do in order to keep certain people in my life happy with me. And I didn't really have an identity. I didn't really have a, I probably, I obviously had a personality, but I wasn't like a really fleshed out personality. And I was kind of like a chameleon and I was, I was easy to like blend into my surroundings and I was easy to just shape and mold myself into the person that someone else needed me to be for themselves. And it was a very empty feeling. And after I got out of that, I think that's when I really started to kind of form my own identity for myself and for nobody other than myself because I really had to take a hard look at myself in the mirror as well as in my therapist's office of who I was and who I wanted to be. So as much as I can, you know, sit here and say all these horrible things about myself and why I let myself you know, make that dumb decision and, you know, berate myself for making that mistake when I could have saved myself all that heartache and all that trouble and all that pain and, you know, X, Y, and Z, it's not going to change anything. And even if somebody walked through my door right now and said, I have a time machine, I can go back and we can fix one mistake of your whole life, I wouldn't even fix anything. I wouldn't go back and not get involved with that person because I don't think I would... Like I said, I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for that time period and it wasn't for me getting involved with that person. So I think it's important that when we reflect on past mistakes that we give ourselves some grace. And it reminds me of this um, saying that a friend of mine or a friend I used to have um, during that time period would say to me all the time it's that people are in your life for a reason a season or a lifetime and there is definitely a specific reason why our paths crossed and there's a reason it only crossed that one time and it'll probably never cross again and I'm 100% okay with that but I wouldn't have learned the lessons that I've learned since then if I didn't let myself make that mistake. And I think that's an important lesson to learn is like, yeah, we can say how much we hated, you know, making mistakes or wishing we had done something different differently. But, you know, things happen for a reason. Things happen the way that they do for a reason. And mistakes are going to happen. We're not all perfect. We're always going to make mistakes. We're always going to do something that's not right. We're always going to 
you know, make a wrong decision or make a bad decision. And I think what really makes a person stand out is how they handle the outcomes of that mistake, how they handle the consequences of that mistake. And are they willing to do what needs to be done to never make that mistake again? And my husband said something um, about this topic that I think is really profound and is very fitting, obviously. But he said that making mistakes are important because they give you the opportunity to realign your moral compass. And that's definitely a perspective that I never would have thought of. But it it does kind of ring true because certain mistakes, depending on the situation and the decisions, can make you realize what's truly important to you. Like for the fuckboy example, after, like obviously I learned a lot of very hard life lessons about myself um, and after that time period, but I also learned that I'm not a friends with benefits type of person. I'm not a one night stand person. I'm, I'm just not that type of person. I very much like relationships. I'm really, I'm a relationship person. And luckily the next relationship I got into was with my husband and now we're married and now it's, you know, the epitome of all relationships in my opinion, at least in my life. But I learned that I'm I can't do casual relationships like other people can. And if you can, I commend you. More power to you. But some people aren't like that. I'm not like that. And there's nothing wrong with being like that. And they're just like there's nothing wrong with being able to have those casual uh relationships with people. You do you, boo boo. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. But I also learned kind of what I wanted out of a partner and because he the fuck by only all he really showed me was what I didn't want and I was like okay I had my fill I may I had that experience I did that thing it wasn't the it wasn't my sh- shiniest moment but it's the decision that I made not own it and it definitely showed me all the things I didn't want out of the next relationship that I was going to be in. So when a mistake is brought to your attention, whether it's because you realized it on your own or because somebody told you about it or somebody made you aware of it, I think it is important to kind of sit with it and really try and decide, okay, what is this mistake trying to teach me? It can be, it doesn't all, like all mistakes don't have to be life profound um, lessons, but there's something to be learned from it. And it could be something as simple as uh, not popping off about your new boss in the middle of work where anybody can hear you, which is also a mistake that I had to learn uh, recently this month, which could also be a reason why mistakes was what I decided to talk about. Because one thing I think that a lot of people, maybe they don't think about it or they don't, or they don't realize it or, you know, whatever it is, but like you are the product of your environment. And you have complete control over your life. I know it doesn't seem like it because bills and, you know, a lot of other outside components dictate a lot of, a lot of aspects of our life. But what I mean by it is if you have something in your life that you don't like, you can change it. And you have the power to change it at any point in time. 
and something that maybe I've just noticed, but I feel like when people don't hold themselves accountable when it comes to their mistakes and they don't take an active role in correcting their mistakes can very easily fall into a victim mentality. And I can't stand a victim mentality. And the reason why I can't stand victim mentalities is because I've lived with two people that have victim mentalities and quite frankly they're annoying because they complain about their life they complain about their situation they complain about everything under the sun and about how they want more for their life and they want more for themselves and they don't understand why it's not happening for them and this that and the other but then and then they come to you for advice. They're like, I'm really sick of this. I'm really sick of my situation. And I don't know what to do. Like, what should I do? And then you give them like really solid sound advice that can actually help start to fix their problems. And they just go, yeah, I'm not doing that. And here's every reason why I'm not doing that. And that just irritates me to no end. Because if you're coming to me and you're complaining about your life and your situation and your outcomes and you ask me what you can do to fix it and I give you really good advice and then you just blatantly don't care and aren't going to do anything that I suggested, you can fuck right off. Because you not only wasted my time with your complaining, but you also wasted my solid advice that could have helped somebody that's willing to do the work. And I'm just not a person that wants to listen to somebody complain about the same things all the time in every... Um, interaction I have with them and they're just complaining about the same things but making no decisions to get them out of their situation or their predicament I have no time for that I have no energy for that because to me that just means you just want to sit there and throw a pity party And hope and pray somebody's going to walk in through the door and fix all your problems for you. And that's just not realistic. And nor am I going to be someone's savior in that aspect. Like, I'm not just going to walk up to these people with victim mentalities. But like, I'm going to solve all your problems for you. Because, no, I'm not. I've said this before, I'll I'll say it again, and I'll probably keep saying it for as long as this podcast is around. No one's going to fix your problems for you. Absolutely no one. Not because they don't want to, but mainly because they physically can't. If you have a problem, uh, outside people and people around you can only do so much to help with your problem. But you still have to be the one that rolls your sleeves up and gets down to the nitty gritty of why you're having this problem and figure out how to fucking fix it. No one can do that for you. People can offer advice and they can offer support and they can offer different ideas and different takes, but none of that matters until you decide, okay, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to do this because it really honestly takes, everybody has their own limits. Everybody has you know, the fuck it, I'm done moment in any problem. But it really takes it to when you're at your limit and you're like, I'm fucking tired of this. I'm tired of my life in this aspect. I'm tired of having this same problem. I'm tired of doing the same thing all the time. And you can be tired of those things but if you don't do anything to change it 
nothing's going to get done. Nothing's going to get fixed. It's just going to be the same thing. And all you're going to do is continue complaining about it. So when it comes to mistakes, understand that you're going to have them. You're going to make them. You're going to have people in your lives that make them when it involves you. But I would just suggest that you make sure that you can learn from your mistake and you can do something differently next time and that you back up what you say. Like if you say you're going to make X, Y, Z changes and you're not going to make that mistake again, make sure that you actually back up what you're saying. And what I mean by that is... I've always and probably will always be a very firm believer that actions speak louder than words. Um, But I will also say in the same breath that words carry weight because they do in their own uh, respect. But in situations like this, if the actions and the words don't match or align, it's the actions that will always prove why the words mean nothing. Because you can say, I'm going to make this change. I'm going to do this. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. You know, you can say all the pretty words in the world. But if your actions don't back up what your mouth is saying, no one's going to believe you. And no one's going to take you seriously in situations where if you didn't make a mistake and you say you're going to fix it, but you haven't fixed any of the other past mistakes that have been brought to your attention, no one's going to believe you're going to fix this one. Because saying things will only get you so far. And after a while, if your actions aren't proving what your mouth is saying, it's not going to get you far at all. Everybody learns differently. Everybody learns at their own pace. Everybody reaches their own limit, like I said earlier. Everybody's going to tackle their own mistakes in their own way. But I just hope that you can tackle it in a man, in a such a way that makes it so you never have to make the same mistake twice. And that people will believe you when you say that you're not going to make that mistake again. So I hope you all enjoyed this podcast because... The struggle was real this month, let me tell you. Um, If you did enjoy this episode or any past episodes, um, follow the podcast. You can follow me on social media. All of my handles are down below. Subscribe to the podcast. Um, Let me know what you guys think. You can send me a text message. Speaking of text messages, I do want to give another shout out to my Wyoming listener. I got it right this month. I learned, see, look at that. I learned from my mistake last month when I said a different state. But thank you again to my Wyoming listener. I appreciate you reaching out to me every month after every episode. And I'm super glad that you enjoy the podcast. I also want to give another shout out to my fan in Japan, We are international now, bitches. We have crossed an ocean. Uh, But thank you for sending um, your love from Japan. It's really appreciated. I enjoy receiving these text messages. They literally make my whole day when I get them. And as always, to all the negative voices in your head, bitch bet. I'll see you guys next month. Thanks so much for listening. Until we talk again next time.